Hello and welcome to more Nerdy Rodent Geekery. Today I'm once again diving into the world of Stable Diffusion. Yes, you guessed it, I'm looking at Stable Diffusion Infinity. Out painting with Stable Diffusion on an infinite canvas. Now we're going to be using WSL2 on Ubuntu Linux, which you should already have installed and running. If you haven't, then these links are down in the description. Of course, this will tell you how to install Linux on Windows with WSL. Basically, it's that one command there, and that will get everything up and running. We're also going to be using Docker. So again, there's another link there that tells you how to install Docker and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to go through that now because this is the most painful bit because we're going to be using Microsoft Windows for the first 24 steps, and then eventually we'll get onto Linux for the final bit. So the first thing you're going to do is much like me, you're going to have to open one of your internet web browsers. And then you're going to have to put this address, which is down in the description, into the address bar in your internet browser. So let's do that. We'll pop that into there. I'm using copy and paste. You can use copy and paste too. And then you should get a page which looks a little bit like this. Of course, if you're watching this in the future, it may be slightly different, but that's how this page is now. There's this blue text here that you want to click on there. So it says available for Windows. Now I'm using a different browser to the default in Windows. So when I click on it, and I've also set it up differently, that will start to download the file. And I already have a place where I can choose where to download my files. If you're using Microsoft Edge, which is the default browser, which comes with Microsoft Windows, then that will just start downloading automatically into a pre-decided downloads directory for you. Either way, once it's finished downloading, you're going to have to try and open that file. So either remember where you just downloaded it to, or if you're using Microsoft Edge, there'll be a little green arrow that you can click on. And then there'll be some blue text that says open file. And if you click on that, that will start the Docker installation. You'll get another little Docker window appear. You can close your web browser at that point and uh, it, will, it will start installing Docker. So on the installing Docker desktop window, there'll be a gray OK button down in the bottom right. And that will, uh, that will, you know, you can just click on that, wait some time, and it will eventually install. Now, you're going to have to log out or reboot your computer at this point. So make sure you're not doing anything else at all. Close everything down, save everything that you've got. And then when prompted to do so, click that button and do a Windows and you'll be forced to log out. So make sure that when you click that button, you're ready to do so because it's going to close everything down and log you back out. You are then, of course, going to have to log right back in again and start everything up that you had previously. So that's, that's yeah, it's the Windows way of doing things, isn't it? So uh, once you log back in, you'll get a little pop-up that will talk about your Docker subscription. So let's have a quick look at the old Docker thing now. I have, have of course, already installed it. So you'll get this little pop-up. That'll pop up there like that. And uh, you won't have the Stable Diffusion Infinity thing yet. We're going to install that. That's fine. Uh, now, you are going to need to um, accept those license agreement terms uh, if you do. Um, there are certain, you know, sorts of people, if you're a professional, if you're working in a company with a big, you know, lots and lots of people, you are going to have to pay for Docker. Uh, but for personal use, it is free. So after some time, you'll get another pop up and that will ask you to do the tutorial. Feel free to do the tutorial by clicking the blue start button and that will take about two minutes to go through. Now, you might want to make the uh, the small window a little bit bigger so it's, uh, it, it's actually usable. It sort of starts a little tiny window on the side so you can drag that out in order to finish off doing the tutorial. So once you finish doing the tutorial, that will get you used to using Docker and all the sorts of things that are gonna happen and takes about two minutes. So next up, you're going to need to locate and click the tiny white cog icon that when you hover over it with your mouse button, mouse pointer even, it will say settings. So that's this cog here. As you can see, it says settings on it. So when we click that, things will change. Now you'll need to scroll down. You'll need to tick this box here that says use Docker Compose V2. So make sure that is on. And then you're going to have to go to resources and then WSL integration. So over on the left there, you're going to have to make sure that that little tick box is ticked and that Ubuntu slider isn't white. You have to make sure that that's blue. 
and then you'll have to click apply and restart again. You may have to reboot again at that point as well. And then you're almost there. Then you're almost there. So now you're going to have to click on the little, there's a little icon down at the bottom here that's like four white squares. Now, if you click on that and start typing the word Ubuntu, then Ubuntu on Windows will appear and you can click that icon and then your Ubuntu WSL will start and then you've got a proper operating system and you are ready to go. So that's the most difficult part over and done with. Now you're ready to start on the really, really easy bits because we're, we're into Linux, we're into Linux. So basically, if you're following along and you're copying stuff like me, you will have a GitHub directory that you've already created where you download all your stuff. Feel free to make your GitHub directory now with mkdir GitHub if you haven't made it already. So next, we're gonna to need to do exactly what it says on here because none of these Docker instructions are on here, but now we're into this sort of world here. So running with Docker on Windows or Linux, you wouldn't want to do this on Linux. It's, it, you, can just, you can just do it for the five steps above. So you want to CD into your stable diffusion infinity uh, directory after you have git cloned it. So you'll need to do this bit up here first. So git clone recurse sub modules and that. So obviously I've run that already and then I can CD into my stable diffusion infinity and then Docker directory. Okay, so you don't, you don't run these other two on Microsoft Windows unless you're setting up your environment properly. So there we go. So we've CD'd into stable diffusion infinity Docker and then you just run exactly the same command whether you're on Windows or Linux, docker run dot sha. So there you go. As you can see, once you get into Linux, it is exceptionally simple. You can also click over onto your, uh, you can somehow turn the settings off on that. I don't know. Leave the Docker desktop running. That will eventually have a little Docker thing turn up on it. Can you get rid of the settings? There we go. Cancel. That gets rid of the settings. All right. So there you go. There you've got your Docker desktop and this should eventually start running. As you can see, it's downloading and it's installing all the things. It's it's basically doing these commands for you. Conda env create minus f environment.yml. So it's it's creating a, a new Linux on your Linux that's got all the stuff in it. It does everything for you. It's all automatic. And then eventually you'll see this bit here running on local URL 0.0.08888. But it's not actually running on that URL at all, like they say over here as well. It's actually localhost 8888. So then you can click on that and there you have your uh, little Gradio interface, which is exactly the same as automatic 1111s, basically. Now you will need to pop your Hugging Face token in there, which you can get from your Hugging Face account. And then you click the setup button and that may indeed take a while. <laughs> this will take some seconds to set up. So um, yes, so feel free to make a cup of tea while this does its setup. I think if you're not using the Docker, this is a little bit quicker, but if you are using the Docker, then it, it takes some time. It takes some time. So we've got a bunch of options that we can go through here. Patch match is basically the best one. So you want to use that the entire time, but you can have some other options there. Out paint, that's the button you're gonna be pressing to create all the things most of the time. Export, that's gonna save your image tick that sort of saves things you've got a redo and you've got an undo button as well you've got this button here which moves your little block you've got that button there which moves your canvas and you've got this button here which is an eraser here you can resize input to 512 by 512 if you keep that ticked and there you can enable or disable the safety checker you've got your steps there which is absolutely fine on 50 and the guidance as well there, which is fine on 7.5. You've also got a strength, which is generally good at 0.75 as well. And the photometric correction. That basically gets rid of seams. Now it's disabled by default, but you know, feel free to tick it. Of course, in the middle there, that is where you type your prompt. So I'm gonna start thinking about a prompt now. Um, I'm going to have a fantasy, fantasy, art style painting of a forest okay so that is what it's going to use eventually 
when this has finished setting up. So I'll just pause time slightly now and come back in the future. Okay, so there we go. It has finally finished doing its setup. So here, as you can see, we've got a little black box that we can move around the screen. So if I put it there, and as mentioned, press the out paint button, that will start doing its thing. Make that a little bit bigger. You can, ask, you can of course, also upload an image, but we're just doing it from scratch here. And that will go through as this little thing goes round and round and round. It will eventually generate a bit of my fantasy forest. And there we go, we've got a bit of a fantasy forest. So then you just move the little box over again more. Now it's it's good to not just move the box into a completely random area, sort of have about 50% of what you want to carry on in the box. And then when you carry on, it will carry on that style rather than just making something completely random. So yeah, aim, aim for having about 50% of, of things in the box. As you can see there, not a very good match. So let's press the redo button and that will do the same thing again. We may have to undo that and move it back over a little bit more, depending on how good it is at in paint, out painting even. Let's, let's, no, that, one's, that one's a little bit, little bit worse. So let's undo that. We'll use that undo button and we'll move over a little bit more and we'll try the out paint again. And maybe that will fill in that side a little bit more pleasingly <laughs> because that is a word. Okay, that's a little bit better. So let, let's try again on this side and again. We're going to have most of the box filled in and only a little bit of the box empty. And we're hoping it's going to fill in the other side of that tree. And then, yes, there we go. That's not too bad, is it? It's sort of going up a hill there. So then you could have a little bit there. So we, we, we need to change the prompt maybe because we don't necessarily want the forest floor on that bit. We're here we're doing the forest floor. So we might have to change the prompt a bit and say fantasy art style painting of a forest uh, with a blue cloudy sky. So hopefully we should start getting a little bit of the, the tree top going on in there and uh, not so much of the green stuff at the bottom. So let's let's see how well this does. Is it any good? Is it any good? Yes, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's kind of carrying on with the trees a bit there, isn't it? So we can try this bit over here as well. This should fill in these trees. Maybe we'll get a little bit of grassland here, but we should should get a little bit of sky up at that bit. That's not too bad, is it? That's not too bad. And let's just show using the eraser. So say we don't like this seam in here. We can just erase that. We can pop back over here. And then we can try the out paint button again. And maybe it will fill in those trees a little bit better and a bit around the box as well there. Let's see what it does. Is it any better? Is it any better? Mm, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. We've got a little box there as well that we need to fill in. So that that is it, basically. That is it. There you go. You've now got an infinite canvas. So there's the canvas button. You click that one. You can scroll the canvas itself around. So this is this is as big as you want it to be. <laughs> it's an infinite canvas. Got the eraser button there, you got the move the box there, and, and there you go. You just go in, going around as, as often as you feel like, filling in all the bits and pieces. Now, of course, if you want to install this on Linux, you don't have to do any of that Docker stuff at all. You can literally just git clone the repository, change directory into it, condor and create minus f environment.yml, activate sdint, and then just run python app dot py and that will get you up and running in a few seconds now the other advantage of course of not using docker is that you can then edit this app.py and you can change some of the bits and pieces in here so for example where you're loading this comp is stable diffusion 1.4 model you may want to load one of your own special custom dream booth models so you can't do that in docker without you know, a little bit of hassle going into your Docker image, logging into that one instead, and then changing the code in there. A lot easier just to change it if you install the app nicely, natively and wonderfully on Linux. But if you want to learn some more nerdy rodent geekery, then do click on one of these links.